How do you estimate the variance of a random variable's probability density function? And I've shown one example of a PDF here. If we were to estimate the shape, we would need to estimate the mean, and then we could estimate the width of this or, or the variance, the second moment. So I've got an equation here for an estimate of the variance. You need to take samples from your random variable. You take n samples, and for each sample, you subtract the estimate for the mean, and then you take the square and sum them up. This gives you a way to estimate the variance of that random variable. Now, one thing we notice straight away is that when you take a set of samples, you'll get a particular estimate. If you take a different set of samples, you will get a different estimate. And this is one of the most important concepts in understanding this, is to realize that this estimate itself is random. It depended on which actual samples you took. So here's an equation for working out an estimate, but it gives you a different value for different samples. Therefore, this is a random variable. So we would now like to know something about the mean and the variance of this random variable. And this is where this can get a little bit confusing. Sometimes people end up going around in circles because we want to know the mean of an estimate of the variance, and we also want to know the variance of an estimate of the variance. So let's try and take it one step at a time. So let's look at the mean first. So we're going to try and find the mean of this estimate. Now, if your overall population is much bigger than the number of samples you take, then it turns out that the expected value of this estimate is given by this formula, where sigma squared is the variance of the original random variable. And you can see straight away that this is a biased estimate. So uh, we're going to do something to make that unbiased in a minute. But first of all, let's just remind ourselves again what exactly this is. And I've written it out in longhand here because I really think it helps to see it this way to keep reminding ourselves. This is the expected value of the estimate of the variance of the random variable PDF. So sometimes let's work backwards through this again. The random variable has a PDF. I've drawn an example of it here. Uh, it has a variance. We're going to estimate that variance. The estimate is itself random, and therefore we can find its expected value. Because for example, for one set of measurements, you might have got a small value of variance. And so then you would think that the, the PDF would look like this. Maybe this is for, let's call it experiment one. And then if you did a different experiment where you had a different set of samples, then you might get a larger value for this. And then in that case, you would be estimating that you, your variance of your random variable is bigger. You would have this. So you, you're not actually exactly measuring the true PDF. You're just getting an estimate of that PDF. So that's again, seeing it written out like this, it's worth going through those steps to make sure you're absolutely clear about what's happening when you're getting expected values of estimates of the variance. Now, returning to this biased aspect, we can easily make this unbiased by, by taking these measurements, working out our value of S squared, and then simply normalizing it by N on N minus one. And this becomes an unbiased estimate. So as you estimate uh, S squared, you will be getting the the expected value will be the true value sigma squared. That's what it means to be unbiased. Okay, so the last bit to say is, again, the one that often confuses people the most, let's talk about the variance of this estimate. We've got the mean of the estimate, but we can have the variance of the estimate. So over here, there's a formula for the variance of the unbiased estimate, this one down here. And it's given by this formula here. Uh, where n is the number of samples again, mu4 is the fourth central moment of the random variable, and this is just sigma to the power 4 here, so it's the square of the variance. This is sigma squared, you square that again, you get sigma to the power 4. Okay, so let's again write out this in longhand. Uh, this is the really the confusing one because it's a variance of a variance, but let's say it in longhand. It's the variance of the unbiased estimate of the variance 
of the random variable PDF. And again, I find it helpful to go backwards through this sometimes. It's a random variable, it has a PDF. That PDF has a variance, we're drawing it over here. We're gonna take an unbiased estimate of that variance, the width of this curve over here. And then because it's random, because we've estimated it from random samples, it will have itself a variance. So it's a variance of a variance. Um, now let's just put a bit more example into this to really try to help to understand this. Let's look at uh, a, a one particular case of this formula where we, where we can work out what the fourth moment is. If your, sister, if your original random variable is a Gaussian random variable, then we know that the fourth moment is given by this equation here. We substitute this into there and we get this expression for the variance of our estimate, of our unbiased estimator. It's given by this formula here. Uh, now we can see some things in general that we can say from this. So if sigma squared, if the variance of your random variable, so sigma squared, if sigma squared is small, then this expression will be small. And that makes sense because the samples would be drawn from a narrower distribution. So if this curve over here was in fact narrower, then it would be more accurately estimated from a given number of samples because this variance here, which is the variance of the estimate of the variance, this would be smaller. Your estimate of that variance would be, have a smaller variance. This thing would be small and it's easy to estimate it. And that makes sense because if it's narrow, if the true distribution is narrow, all the samples you're getting will tend to be from a small cluster and it will be easy to estimate that variance. And this number will be small. This equation tells us that. If sigma squared is big, if this actual variance is big, then the samples will be more spread out. The samples you're getting, putting into this equation will be more spread out. And then it will be harder to estimate or there'll be more variance on the estimate of the variance. And you can see that again here, this number would be bigger. So it is a complicated uh, concept to having a, an estimator which is a random variable and especially when you're estimating the variance because that random variable will itself have a variance. But hopefully this video has helped you to understand that more. If it has, give it a thumbs up, helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos and check out the description below where you'll find a link to a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.